I know most people watching this have never seen me in person, so you're gonna have to trust me when I say I'm about 6 foot 7 inches tall, or almost exactly 2 meters. And as far as humans go, that's pretty big. Not to brag or anything, but if we take a look at an average American male, he'll likely be only 5 foot 9, or 1.75 meters, or only 87% of my size. Being the height that I am definitely has its advantages. I can always reach things, I was only chosen first to be on sports teams, and the regular people cower in fear at me whenever I walk down the street. But despite how big this might seem, in the scope of living things, I'm still real teeny tiny. If we look at Balaenoptera musculus, more commonly known as a blue whale, we'll see an animal that can reach a length of 30 meters long and can weigh up to 157 tons. And they've never had a recorded issue of being unable to reach the top shelf at the grocery store. That's roughly 17 average people tall and equivalent to over a whopping 2,700 average people in weight. Long story short, blue whales are pretty big and with these dimensions make it the most massive known animal to ever have roamed the earth. Several things contribute to the blue whale's amazing size. For starters, by living in the ocean, the whale's own buoyancy means its skeleton doesn't need to work so hard to lift all of its weight. Being warm-blooded, the blue whale needs blubber to maintain body temperature, making them much heavier than other marine organisms need to be. Their grazing habits taps into one of the lowest trophic levels, gaining the blue whale degrees of magnitude more available energy than other carnivorous animals and even other whales. Surprisingly, however, while definitely the most massive, the blue whale isn't the longest animal to have ever existed. The extinct Argentinosaurus was the largest known dinosaur to have walked the Earth, having inhabited what's now Argentina approximately 97 to 93 million years ago. Not many fossils have been found of this creature, only a couple vertebrae, rib bones, and parts of a leg bone. Because of this, only estimates of the Argentinosaurus' total length and weight can be made based on other, smaller species similar to the Argentinosaurus. These estimates can vary quite a lot, but typically place the creature between 30 to 35 meters long from head to tail. But even if it was a full 35 meters, this still would not have been the longest animal ever. That honor most likely falls upon the lion's mane jellyfish. Still swimming in our oceans today and native to the Arctic waters, this is definitely one of those animals that you'll see and you'll think to yourself, that's an alien. The largest recorded specimen ever found washed up on the shores of Massachusetts Bay in the United States back in 1870. When completely stretched out, the tentacles of this creature came out to an astounding 37 meters long, making it the longest recorded single animal ever. But as big as blue whales, crazy dinosaurs, and alien jellyfish are, life can get much much, much, much bigger. For this, we'll need to leave the realm of animals and start looking at plants. Giant sequoias are the biggest tree species on Earth, found growing only in the North American West Coast, predominantly in the American state of California. Currently, the biggest individual tree is General Sherman, which comes out to almost 84 meters tall from base to top, or the length of 2.8 blue whales, or 48 people tall. Of course, this isn't even taking into account the roots, which can reach another 14 meters deep into the ground. In terms of mass, General Sherman comes in at 1,910 tons, which is over 4.2 million pounds. That comes out to over 12 blue whales or nearly 31,000 people in weight. But if that seems like a lot, we're just getting started. First off, although General Sherman is the largest tree by volume, there are in fact taller trees, with the tallest one being named Hyperion, also in California, which stands at almost 116 meters tall, a full 32 meters taller than General Sherman, or in other words, more than one full blue whale taller. Beyond this, however, we still have records of even more more massive trees, again, all from California. A tree called the Crannel Creek Giant was believed to be between 15 and 25% larger than General Sherman by volume. That creates a maximum possible mass of almost 2,400 tons, or over 5.2 million pounds. That would come out to be about 15 blue whales, or 38,000 people, which is absolutely insane to think about. The city I live in now has a population of hardly over 40,000, so this one tree would have weighed about as much as everyone who lives here combined. Unfortunately, the Crannel Creek Giant was cut down in the mid-1940s, but even this paled in comparison to the biggest tree ever recorded, known as the Lindsay Creek Tree, found growing in Saudi Arabia. 
I'm just kidding, it was also in California. The trunk volume of this tree was an estimated 90,000 cubic feet. General Sherman, for comparison, has a trunk volume of a little over 52,000 cubic feet. So this would be a good indication of just how much larger the Lindsay Creek tree was, measuring nearly twice the size of General Sherman. All this volume translated into an approximate mass of nearly 3,300 tons, or 7.2 million pounds. This comes out to roughly 1.7 times the size of General Sherman, or nearly 21 full-grown blue whales, or just under 53,000 average fully-grown humans. Measurements of its height put it at around 119 meters, or 390 feet. If true, this would have made the Lindsay Creek tree not only the most massive, but also the tallest organism we've talked about so far. Unfortunately, this tree is no longer standing either, having been blown down by a storm in 1905. There's no record of the tree's roots, by the way, so the total volume, mass, and height of the overall organism would have been even higher than this. In all, the Lindsay Creek tree was the largest single-stem tree ever known to have existed. But that's just single-stem trees, which, yes, means we're not done yet. See, while some trees, like General Sherman, have the strategy of growing one huge trunk that occupies a relatively small portion of the Earth's surface area, there are other trees, called clonal trees, yes, clonal, like clones, that have the opposite strategy. Instead of one massive trunk, they sprout multiple smaller trunks from the same root system. These typically don't grow very tall, but instead rely more on covering a large area to ensure its survival. If allowed to grow continually, well, they'll do just that, sometimes growing into basically islands of a single tree within a forest. The biggest of these types of trees is located not too far away from the giant sequoias actually, in south central Utah, again in the United States. This tree is known by the name Pando. Seriously, I'm not joking. It translates into Latin as I spread out, which, well, yeah, Pando sure did. Pando is a member of the quaking aspen species, which grow and store energy and nutrients in their roots. From these roots, the trees can sprout smaller individual trees that are still connected and genetically identical to the root system. These new trees continue to photosynthesize synthesize and add more energy and nutrients back to the roots, allowing it to grow even more trees. The root system of Pando got started an estimated 80,000 years ago, while most of the actual above-ground trees are only about 80 to 120 years old. So while all of the above-ground trees may be fairly recent, the root system would qualify as one of the oldest organisms the Earth has ever seen. Over this incredibly long time, Pando grew to an area of 106 acres, or 43 hectares. Covering this area are an estimated 40,000 individual tree trunks, each one genetically identical and connected to one another through their roots, each one more like a branch on a single tree than a tree in their own right. Altogether, these tree trunks add up to make a single organism that weighs nearly 6,000 tons, or just over 13 million pounds. That's roughly two full-grown Lindsay Creek trees, 38 blue whales, or almost 97,000 people. On top of that, it's thought that Pando used to be even bigger. Unfortunately, for the past 30 to 40 years, Pando is thought to have started dying. Although not entirely certain why, researchers expect it to be a combination of factors including more frequent droughts caused by shifting climate, increased wildfire suppression caused by human oversight, and increased cattle grazing encouraged by humans as well. Yep, this one's our fault. Even still though, Pando remains the most massive organism to have ever been discovered by humans, nearly twice the size of the biggest single stem tree on Earth. But that doesn't mean there aren't still physically bigger organisms out there that might not be nearly as heavy as Pando, but which spread out over a greater total surface area. An example of this can be found in the waters of the Mediterranean Sea, not in the United States. Throughout this sea lives a grass known as Posidonia oceanica, or just Neptune grass. This grass has a very similar strategy to Pando, where it's the root system which survives and expands while producing expendable grass stalks wherever conditions are optimal. Usually, patches of Neptune grass are small and diverse, but south of the island of Ibiza lies a single patch all connected by a single root system, all genetically identical, that spreads out over a distance of 8 kilometers. Based on the observed growth rate of this seagrass, it's predicted that this particular colony must be around 100,000 years old to have made it to this size, making it potentially the oldest organism on Earth as well. 
But if we're talking about size and not mass, we can get even bigger. For this though, we need to leave the realm of plants and enter a new one, fungus. To understand this one, we need to learn a little bit more about the mushroom species Armillaria ostiae. So normally, fungus feeds on dead organic matter left behind by plants killed by natural causes. But this one is what you'd call a parasitic fungus, meaning it figured out that if it could kill trees and then digest them, it could control its own growth and no longer depended on chance deaths to support itself. Basically, it's a cold-blooded killer that sets up camp on a single tree until it's dead from a root disease known as white rot and then consumes the remains. Ironically, these are also known as honey mushrooms and are said to be some of the tastiest mushrooms to scavenge for. While the above-ground biomass of this fungus stays pretty small, just a few mushrooms around the stump of a tree, beneath the surface, its roots, called the mycelium, explode throughout the soil searching for new trees to infect. Most of the time, trees have their own defenses against threats like this, but when a bunch of trees in a single area don't, the fungus, which maintains all of its previous biomass beneath the soil even after it's done digesting the tree, can grow to truly enormous sizes. The biggest is to be found, again, also in the United States. Things really are bigger here, this time in the state of Oregon in Malheur National Forest. Here, the mycelium of a single fungus has come to encompass 890 hectares, or 2,200 acres. That's almost 21 times the area of Pando, the One Tree Forest. Surprisingly, the estimates on the age of this humongous fungus are only around 2,400 years old, far younger than Pando or the seagrass bed by Ibiza, having gotten its start around 400 BCE. It was around this year that the Olmec culture of Central America was coming to a mysterious end, Romans were building their first aqueducts, and many of the famous Greek philosophers were doing some of their best thinking, all while the biggest organism on Earth was getting its start. Amazingly, however, this fungal structure isn't actually all that heavy, with estimates placing its total mass only around 605 tons, or about one-tenth the mass of Pando, or equivalent to only about four blue whales or nearly 10,000 people. Despite its low weight, this fungal mycelium structure is the largest known single living organism we are aware of today, so this is where we can go no further. Unlike Pando, however, this giant fungus has shown no signs of poor health and will continue to grow, slowly spreading a parasitic death across Oregon, growing in size until something stops it. It's not really known just how large something like this can get and might be able to keep growing until there's nothing left to feed off of. And if you're looking for a good science fiction book idea, well, here you go, you can have it. What I find interesting, however, is that the majority of these massive organisms can be found within only the United States. Why this is the case isn't really clear either, but it's likely a combination of the Americas being spared from extremely high-density human habitation until recently, allowing these organisms to persist without the threat of human interaction, along with an abundance abundance of well-educated researchers capable of noticing and recording such incredible natural wonders. Something like this giant mycelium network is so easy to miss if not properly educated, and it makes me wonder if there could be even larger, more massive organisms located in places without so many educated people just waiting to be discovered. <laughs> Man, if I did sponsorships, this would be a great time to roll in Curiosity Stream or like Brilliant or something, right? Yeah, I'm not going to do that, but as more countries accumulate greater populations of scientists and researchers, maybe new discoveries will be made, potentially pushing the limits on what we thought life could accomplish, or even what life really is. Maybe if something new is discovered, I'll make a video on that as well. To make sure I'm still around to make videos about things like this, I'd suggest checking out my Patreon like all of these people did. If not, that's fine, but maybe at least subscribe so you see any video I make in the future. I should be back next week with another one. Thanks.